I have been talking about doing a studio tour for years, and every time I went to go do them, another piece of hardware would be on the way, so I would not shoot it, or it was dirty, or I was in the middle of testing a product. There was always a reason why I didn't shoot it. I am just going to shoot this as simply as possible. Two cameras, as little cuts as possible, one take, hopefully. So let's go through it. And just to give you an idea on size, I'm standing here. I'm gonna to touch without moving my feet. I'm gonna slide over here and I'm gonna to touch without moving my feet. I believe this is nine by eight ish tiny. My absolute pride of a workstation. This is my Mac setup. This is where I do all my video editing, photo editing, day to day stuff. That, that Mac mini is my daily driver. That is the love of my life. And he's also the love of my life. So that's what we got on this side. And then on this side is my gaming recording music setup. So I've got my gaming PC there, recording PC there, and then there's also a MacBook there. And that all kind of integrates together in one monster of a setup. Some of this stuff is a little bit new. I'll go into detail a little bit later, but 32, no, we're not doing hardware, not yet. <laughs> And last but certainly not least, the hardware corner. So this is all of the gear that I use for the content creation work that I do. It's all on pegboard, so it's all just there when I need it. And then I have uh, one of three server racks. Uh, this is kind of my core rack, or I've got my dream machine, which is my gateway firewall, my switch, uh, NVR, and then my two main NASs. Both of those are Unraids. But a bunch of hardware in there that I'm either testing or just storing. Something, something, get in there. Okay, let's start with the desk first. This is the Uplift V2 commercial. This is the four leg version that does have the crossbar. So that's what commercial means. Probably one of the best desks that I have ever had. Uh, I didn't pay for it, but still one of the best that I've ever had. Uh, that was part of a brand deal with Uplift. Um, these are also Uplift file cabinets, which are just kind of, eh, they're not the greatest, but hey, those were also free. Let's start from left to right. Elgato prompter on a Vivo mic arm and probably a random newer ball head. This prompter I just painted white recently and I've also been working on uh, different mod kits for doing vertical and horizontal mounting and kind of just quick release or quick swapping. Uh, iLoud micro speakers. This is the Mojo M68 Neon, I think. Neon, Mojo Geek. I don't even know. And then this is the Keychron. This is a new keyboard. I can't remember the model. I think it's a Q10, but this thing is super solid. This is probably one of the heaviest keyboards that I've ever used ever. And it's it's also a favorite. I've been testing that at work. Um, I'm also currently testing out cream soda, uh, a couple of ergo mice options. So two ball mice, two vertical mice. That is the Logitech MX Master 2S. And then we have the Logitech MX Master 3 as well. That's kind of just in hiding. Moving from left to right, Obsbot Tiny 2K. Oh my God, there's so many models. Obsbot Tiny 2. It's a 4K USB camera. Hi, Tiny. That must not wake up, Tiny. Oh, she doesn't want to listen. <laughs> okay. Let's go from left to right on the ground floor. Apple Magic Trackpad, Work Louder, iLoud Micro, Keychron K14. This is custom painted, custom modded, uh, new keycap set. Uh, also one of my top favorite keyboards of all time. Logi ugh, Logitech, Elgato Stream Deck XL, and then Logitech Lift. Uh, I'm currently testing vertical mouse, mice, mices, mices. And uh, so that's kind of gonna be part of a video series as well. Underneath there is a seven, probably a seven port USB hub over there. And then there's another seven port USB hub over there. M1 Mac mini, 16 gigs of RAM. This is my daily workhorse. This is what I do all photo editing, video editing, daily production. Just everything is always done on this machine. Cal Digit 4 Thunderbolt hub. And then this is just a, I think it's an eight terabyte mechanical hard drive that I just use for time machine backups. Beacon mic that's currently on reserve because I'm just getting ready to test a top seeker microphone. You know, I've always got the RE320 on reserve as well because I just love that microphone so much. It's an Elgato Wave arm and probably one of the greatest mics of all time. Sure, SM58 with lots of stickers and a, a super cheap foam uh, windscreen on it. I use this for voiceovers a lot and I use it for some TikToks too. It's, it's just a great microphone that's super versatile. I think that's kind of it as far as that. Uh, that is a custom painted newer 
arm. It's a wall mounted boom arm. And then that's actually also a newer LED panel uh, with a fuse light box on it. It's just okay, but it, it's got the job done for, for many, many years. Here's some keyboards that I also have on reserve that I swap between, again, just doing different testing, testing different layouts, different switches, different keycaps. I'm constantly rotating things in and out. Okay, on the shelf, SD card reader, a 3D printed memory storage holder. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite devices ever. This is a Philips Hue light controller. So you can set these to four different presets and switch between them with just the click of a button. It's battery operated. I think these batteries have been in here for four months now. Press and hold any button and they all shut off as well. I absolutely love this thing. Oh, and there's a dimmer wheel. So if I wanted to actually dim those lights, you can do that too. Let's put it back to the pretty one. Yeah. Elgato Stream Deck Plus, Beacon Mix Create, Universal Audio 476 audio interface, probably one of my favorite interfaces of all time. I absolutely love that thing. I use it almost every day. Two mic inputs, both with Phantom Power. It has their very famous compressor built into this thing already, separate volume dials for both the speakers and the headphones, and then one touch monitoring, turning it on and off for headphones or speakers. So awesome. It's a sure, PGX D4, that is a wireless transmitter that you can't really see. Hey, there it is. Uh, that allows me to plug in an instrument or a microphone from wireless body pack and then pipe that directly into the USB interface. Uh, I absolutely love that thing. It was way too expensive. I bought it for VR when I was live streaming. Ridiculous expense but I love it and it's awesome and I use it often. Moving along to the gear wall, the gear corner. So this is where I put all of my gear that I use for shooting content. Tripods, lights, mounts, ball heads, uh, cables, both audio and video, microphones, it's kind of all baked into here. So from top to bottom, audio and video cables, general USB cables for iPhones because that's all I use. Lots of magnets, lots of tension arms, desk clamps, phone clamps, anything that I could use to put on a tripod to like create a rig on the spot uh, to get the shot. That's what, that is what, that is what is most important to me is just being able to grab anything at any time, throw it on a tripod and go. Um, that's pretty much that. Big pegboard from wall control. I think that's in three different pieces. Uh, I wish I could fill this entire wall with pegboard because I would do it. Over to the right, we have the network server home lab rack and then just a bunch of hardware that's either on reserve, stuff that I'm testing, uh, new things. There's actually a Lewitt interface and microphone that I'm gonna be working on pretty soon. Super excited for that. Two Unraid NASs, my primary 10 gig editing NAS for everything content creation, and then my archive NAS right below it. Uh, Unify Dream Machine SE, a 16 port PoE switch from Unify as well. And then again, just a bunch of hardware that's kind of just stored, a lot of microphones, USB audio interfaces, cameras, um, little knickknacks here and there and stuff that I'm getting ready to use. I just realized I forgot to show you one of my favorite parts. Hold on, let me take you back. Right here, other than the penises that you see up there, this is my charging rack. So in here, I've got batteries, uh, different charging things. Um, some batteries are for cameras, some are portable batteries, but I have a USB hub that's back there. And then I've got all of these magnetic USB charging cables and I've got them secured in a way so that they don't touch each other and it's safe. But essentially what this allows me to do is when I hang up my lights or anything that needs a charge, I pull out these cables from the rack and I plug it in and then it starts charging. And I can just charge anything that is being stored. So same thing, if I decide that I need to start charging some cameras for my Sony uh, A6400, pull this out, grab one of the magnetic cables, Yoink. That starts charging, and then I put it back. And then I use a smart home thing to turn on that stuff for six hours and then turn it off. So that way stuff isn't constantly being charged and plugged in. Uh, I can turn the charging on and off. There's a uh, home kit charger right there as well that I can turn on and off uh, with uh, Siri. I don't wanna say it, um, but that is, uh, th that's pretty much that. Uh, this is something that just makes battery life so much easier to manage and maintain and pretty much all of the things that I use for content creation on a day-to-day -day basis, they all have that magnetic piece so I can just take any cable, not worry about what connection it is, plug it into the device and it starts charging. 
So like I mentioned before, this side of the room is the gaming, recording, kind of music side. So it's kind of, the core of it is a gaming PC, a recording PC, and then a, a MacBook Air. And it all kind of ties in together through lots of cables and hubs. And I'll kind of show you the, the general of how it works. I just realized I was supposed to use that camera for this shot, but no, no thank you. Uh, this is a Boss Katana. I believe that is the Mark II. And the coolest thing about that amp is that it has a USB audio, USB audio interface built into it that I can connect directly to the Mac. Not only that, it has a bunch of effects that are built right into it that can be controlled with the foot switch or directly from the MacBook itself. It's one of my favorite things ever. I forgot to say the LifeX tiles, which are discontinued, but still some of my favorite lighting that I've ever had ever. I'm so sad that they discontinued it. So the idea is that I can take my guitar, plug it into the amp and record directly to the Mac. And then all of that audio can go directly to the recording PC as well. And I'll get to that in a hot second. This is a 3D printed pedal board. So the aluminum rails obviously aren't 3D printed, but the wedges that are holding up each rail is what is 3D printed. Uh, found this awesome, awesome project online. Uh, I'll have to, I'll throw the link up in the video, but basically this guy designed this modular pedal board and it is probably one of the coolest things that I've 3D printed so far. I absolutely love it. So for those of you that are, are guitar heads or, or pedal heads, I'll let you see what pedals are going on here. Behringer Overdrive, Boss Synthesizer, Polytune Tuner, uh, one of my favorite uh, overdrive pedals. It's such a cheapy, but I love it. Uh, the Boss Super Overdrive, um, the Astronomer V2, which is kind of like a, a, a reverb, very like ancestral, angelic uh, reverb pedal. Canyon, which is a delay and looper, has a little bit of reverb in there too. And then probably my two favorite pedals, like my top favorite pedals right now. This is a Fuzz Distortion. Fuzz, no, I'm sorry, Fuzz Reverb. Yeah, and then this is a, uh, I think this is a, a, a drive chorus, um, but this is a very, uh, I might have to play this for you because it's just a very like wobbly tape echo, very lo-fi pedal, and I absolutely love it. I'll show you what this pedal sounds like. This is just clean. Those pick holders. I'm testing out a bunch of different picks. Found this one company that makes picks for people who have issues holding on to picks. Come on, focus. Focus, you bastard. Got a bunch of different designs on there um, that make it easier to hold. And uh, I have issues with grip, unlike my girlfriend. And uh, that's just something I've been testing recently. So this is a 4K Samsung TV, a 32 inch curved 1440p, 165 Hertz uh, Dell monitor. This is the M2 MacBook Air, 15 inch. Absolutely love that thing. GoPro Hero 4, Obspot, Tail, Full, uh, Tail Air, excuse me. That is a wireless and or wired uh, network camera that can do 4K or 1080p. Uh, it is actually a pan tilt zoom camera. So I set these up to start recording um, different music sessions that I was doing here uh, in the studio. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Like I said, gaming PC, streaming PC, there is capture cards and audio interfaces that are all in this area that kind of make it all work. So uh, desk, Ikea countertop, Alex Ikea drawer, that is the Odin Lake 947 like the, Bo the, the Boeing planes that are falling out of the sky, but unlike the Boeing planes, this thing is solid. Absolutely love this chair. That was part of a brand deal as well. Move that out of the way so you guys can see. So how this works is I have a keyboard and mouse that go into a hardware key, uh, KVM right there. If you don't know what a KVM is, I'm gonna show you. The Thunderbolt hub goes to the MacBook and then the USB hub also goes to the MacBook. 
the USB audio interface goes directly into the MacBook through a hub. And then the KVM goes from the gaming PC to the MacBook. So with the MacBook on, am I gonna have to log in? Son of a bitch. Oh, log in with Apple Watch, motherfucker. Gotta love it. So on one channel with this TV, I have an HDMI switcher that has four inputs. It's currently only viewing one input, but I can split this TV into four different inputs. And I'll, I'll put a, a screenshot up on, on screen that I've done that before. I'm not currently using that method just because I've been testing this KPM. So if I switch this TV over to the other input, which is the streaming PC, you can see I have OBS set up and these three cameras right here are piping directly into OBS. Beacon set up for uh, controlling audio on both PCs. And then of course, you know, Discord webcam controller. So essentially what this allows me to do is I can play games and record through OBS using the recording PC, or if I press this KVM switch, it's gonna switch me over. And now all of this, not, not this stuff up here, but keyboard and mouse monitor are now being controlled by the MacBook. So when I take this guitar and I plug it into this amp, all of this audio gets feeded directly into the audio interface uh, I'm sorry, directly into the MacBook via the amplifier's USB audio interface. And then I use Dante to send all of that audio over the network over to OBS. So the cool thing about that is not only am I capturing myself, so if I'm playing something, uh, I, I wanna be able to see what I was playing at that time if in case I forget it and wanna recreate it. And I also have a camera that looks down at the pedals. So if I am messing around and not paying attention or I forget to save, am I zoomed in right now? I don't know. Uh, if I forget to like make note of where my dials are at, I've got video that can I can recreate it and get back to that sound because that's something that I've done on accident before. <laughs> it made me so mad. So yeah, that's just a cool way of utilizing this small setup to be able to record gameplay uh, to the streaming computer or the recording computer, and then also any music also send over to OBS. So I can capture audio and video from multiple computers all back to here. Um, and this right now, the gaming PC is a, <laughs> oh, actually I haven't showed anybody this yet, but this is kind of how I store some music controllers when I'm not using them. Cause as you can see, I'm a little tight on space. So I put some Velcro on there. So anytime I'm done and I need to reclaim some of my space, just goes right back there. So that is a Intel Core, 80, Core i7-8700K setup. And then that is a Ryzen, Ryzen 1700X as my recording computer. So both pretty dated computers by today's standards, but for what I'm doing, they hold up so well. Uh, I've got a foot pedal down there for, um, actually I mostly use that just for Discord. And then I have a Korg PS1 that is a sustain pedal that I use for looping. So I plug that directly into the Arturia Mini Lab MIDI controller. And that allows me to use my foot to set loops while I'm playing guitar. And that also connects to the MacBook as well. One cool thing that I forgot to show, I have a Vivo dual arm. One of these goes to that monitor and then the other one goes to the MacBook. So I can actually take this when I'm standing and playing, I can pull this out and lift this up and that brings it to like normal height. So I don't have to like go down here and break my wrists. And again, because the, uh, the amp is USB controlled, meaning it, you know, it has a USB interface that plugs directly in. I can control all of the effects and make minor adjustments to that amp all from right here. And that just makes it all the much better. That sentence made no sense. I can't show you the audio interface that's in that corner. I apologize, but currently using the Mackie, I'm sorry, the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. That's a condenser microphone that goes into that secret audio interface. Uh, Mackie headphones, these are actually closed back, which is something historically I have not enjoyed, but I've really been enjoying these clothes back because they don't make my ears sweat. They're breathable and I can still hear outside noise. So they're not completely closed. Um, those are, those were part of a brand deal. Mackie CR2 speakers, they're USB speakers. And those used to be connected to the gaming setup. But since I now use 
guitar VSTs with Ableton, I have those plugged into the MacBook so that I can get low latency uh, VSTs with, with different cab setups and stuff. So actually I'm just gonna switch this KVM back. Back to my gaming setup. One of the one of the things you couldn't really see right there is the Elgato 4K X. That is their new USB capture card that allows me to do pass through 1440p 165 hertz, and it does so fucking good. It is an amazing USB capture card. And then that is the uh, Evo Audient Evo 4. It's the USB audio interface that I use for the Mac um, for powering those speakers. And then if I ever just want to take my guitar which is an Ibanez. I don't even know what model it is, but what you can see is that I lifted it too high in the sky and I hit the fan. <laughs> oh God, my life. Um, I think that is, I think that's it. I lied, I forgot a couple things. So the Beacon Mix and one Stream Deck go to the gaming PC, and then the Beacon Mix Create and one Stream Deck go to the recording PC. Uh, I have my uh, secret audio interface that goes to the streaming PC as well. I use the Beacon Mix Create to route all the audio between the computers. And then that is a GMMK2 from Glorious. It's a 65% keyboard. It's just okay. I love the way that it looks, but I only use it like once or twice uh, every couple of weeks when I'm playing games. Logitech G502, because it's the greatest wireless mouse ever made. And then it's a custom shelf that's holding all of that up. And that's pretty much the summary of my gaming PC peripherals. iPhone 14 Pro, iPad from 2018 that I still use almost every other day. An amazing piece of machine. I think that is the majority. I think that's everything. I'm so thirsty. My arm is so tired from holding this camera. And since this has now become a big part of my life, I figured I'd show you this too. You guys have seen this before. It's the workshop, right? A little messy right now, but it's got the his and her setup, the computer in between. We're able to watch the, the same kind of content if we're working together, but you know, she's got her paint wall. I've got the, the tool wall for all the goodies. Um, but what is new is kind of this area that used to be a desktop that was kind of sitting height, but I just recently raised it up to standing height. And this is the kitty. Why? Oh yeah. So purchased one cabinet to bring this up to standing height, lifted everything up. And uh, this is where I, I kind of have a makeshift photography studio. Right? I just got some real cheap plywood. Uh, I took some old Amazon umbrella lights apart and I made some light boxes pretty much. And so that's where I've been taking pictures of 3D prints and stuff. And that is a Bamboo Labs PS1 with the AMS. And then I also recently got a uh, what is that? A1 Mini. Um, and they are both fantastic printers. I have been loving them. So there's some paper craft stuff that Weenie's worked on in the past. Also got a bunch of filament that is keeping dry in storage. And then server rack two of three, which has two more Unraid NASs. <laughs> One of these is the archive NAS, which uh, I kind of offload my content onto temporarily just to make sure that it's backed up. Also on a APC UPS. And then the other is uh, one of my older NASs that I converted into just VMs and Docker. So I'm running like Home Assistant off there and HomeBridge, um, Plex, some other things as well. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much the, the gist of everything out here. Uh, we love working out here just because it has access to everything that we could need to be crafty and be creative. And 3D printing has been amazing these past couple months. And I've actually been working on those Elgato portrait Elgato Prompter Portrait Kits, and I'm getting ready to send some of these out. I'm super excited. That is that. We did it. That is the studio tour. Hopefully this doesn't come out too, too long, but I guess we'll see. Thank you for coming along. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, in the comments below. And uh, hopefully the next time we do one of these, it'll be more visually pleasing. Um, but I felt like one of the mistakes that I was making was trying to make this setup one of the most epic things possible, when at the end of the day, I don't need it to be a cinematic masterpiece. It's These are places that I work, they are constantly dirty, they are constantly changing, and I need them. These are all tools to do my job, and I don't wanna get hung up on the way that it looks compared to the way that it works. Because how it works is the most important. I want things to be pretty too, but uh, I let it I let it hang for way too long. And if you don't know who Future Man Gaming is, the fuck are you doing with your life? OG, one of the best to ever do it. Thank you guys for coming through the studio tour. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.